Okay, let's look at problem 61 from University of Physics by OpenStax. Uh, it's in chapter 6. So we have a climber and we are asked to find the tension on the rope and the force that the climber must exert. So I am going to turn this picture into something that looks more like a force diagram. Here is the tension. Here is the force. All right, looks like I have to do some things again. Okay, well that works. Um, this is the mass of the climber. And uh, the force of gravity. Okay, so uh, these are my forces. And if the climber is not falling or moving up, then they must be in equilibrium, meaning all the X components of the forces must cancel out and all the Y components of the forces must cancel out. Let's analyze some of these forces. For instance, the tension has two components, one in the y direction and one in the x direction. Be careful to uh, note the direction of the components correctly because the tension is going like that, the two components must be in the negative x and the positive y direction. Now for the force, we can do something similar. This one will have a component going up. And a component along the x direction. and my weight is all in the y direction. Now I can identify that the force of friction of the shoes of the climber on the rock face will have to be what's providing me my Fy. So this is going to be equal to the force of friction, which we're asked to um, basically find that on part B in order to find the coefficient of friction. Okay, well, let's do part A first. For part A, we find the tension in the rope. Now, the tension in the rope uh, has to be such that the Y components all cancel out. So, TY plus FY. minus W must be equal to zero. Similarly, all the X components have to cancel out. So we'll have FX minus TX is equal to zero. All right, those are the two equations I have to work with. Um, the other pieces of information that I have are that the angles 
are given. So this angle here is 31 degrees. This angle here is 30, no, it's 15 degrees. Now that makes this angle 15 degrees as well. Okay, so from that I can see what my Fy is going to be. Uh, it's going to be the sine of f times the sine of 15 times f. All right. Um, from equation two, I have f of x is equal to t of x. That means that. f cosine of 15 has to be equal to t sine of 31. That's because my fx side is adjacent to the angle of 15 degrees and my x component of the tension is the side that is opposite to the angle of 31. With this I can get f or t in terms of the other. Let's get f in terms of t. So I will have that f is equal to t. Uh, the angles are not the same so I cannot use tangent t sine of 30 over cosine of 15, which is just a number. Sine of 31 over cosine of 15, uh, whatever that is. And now I can put that into my equations uh, from this, from the y components. Now from the y components I have that ty which should be equal to, well I'll rewrite it just so that it's a little bit clearer. So ty is going to be t cosine of 31 plus fy, which is equal to f sine of 15 minus mg is equal to 0. So I can just put mg on the other side. Now I can put in F into this equation. So F is T sine 31 over cosine of 31 over cosine of 15. So that will be T sine of 31 over cosine of 15 times the sine of 15 equals mg. And there's a small uh, simplification there. I can also factor out t and 
And from here I can find the tension. Let's put all that into calculator. So mg, the mass of the climber is 52. So it'll be 52 times 9.8. That gives me 509.6. Divided by, make sure your calculator is in degrees, cosine of 31 plus the sine of 31 times the tangent of 15 which gives me 0 So 509.6 divided by that oh. you just have to put it by hand. Gives me 512 newtons. And that is the tension. Now for the force, um, I can do something similar, but since I already have the tension, I can just go to one of my simplest equations that relates the force and the tension and use that instead. So we notice that I had found this equation here. So I'll just plug this number for T and I will be able to find the force. So and the force is going to be equal to 512.07 times the sine of 31 divided by the cosine of 15 which gives me 273 newtons. Okay, so that's part A. For part B, we are asked to find what is the minimum coefficient of friction between the shoes of the climber and the cliff. So this is part A, let's put some squares along the answers. Okay, now, as I said before, the force of friction is what provides this Fy. If there was no friction, her shoes would slip, so she would not be able to create this component of force along the face of the rock. So I have that Fy is equal to my force of friction. And I know that my force of friction is equal to our coefficient of friction. In this case, it will be static coefficient of friction because her shoes are not slipping, times a normal force. Now, the normal force is Tx. That is the force that is normal to the face of the uh, rock.
Alright, so I have an um I have a way to find my FY, which is just gonna be my force. times the sine of 15 and that has to be equal to the coefficient of friction times my normal force which is Tx and Tx has to be equal to my tension times the sine of 31. So I can find the coefficient simply by algebraically solving that equation, which would be F sine of 15 over T sine of 31. Uh, putting in the numbers that I have that would be 273 times the sine of 15 divided by 512 times the sine of 31 let's see what that is A 70.668 divided by 512 times the sine of 31. Which gives me 0 0.2679. I'll, point, I'll put 0 0.268. Okay, I hope you like that problem.